Well, all right. Welcome back to it. Should be Paul Berlino here, and uh, well, I want to get in. I want to get in on some action here. All right. I'm seeing a lot of these random record uh, uh, challenge, random record challenge videos going on, where people go back to their record collection, blindfold it or whatever it is, and blindly pull out a record and and discuss it. Go back, do another one, and I'm a I'm a trendy kind of guy, right? So I want to get in on this action. Yeah, you know, I see these videos and I just think this looks really fun. It looks like a lot of fun, so I, and I want to do it, so I'm going to do it. Now, um, before I before I get started, well, actually, before I get started, you got you good. You hungry? You need anything? I have, I have some bananas back here. Do you need a banana? No, you got all right. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I have to pull away these records here because, well, because they're in the way. But you know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about the records that I have up front. I have uh, I have this little Richard album, for instance. I bought this recently on Discogs just for the cover. Now I have a good I have a perfectly good proper copy of it with a record and everything that I bought years ago. Um, but I wanted an extra cover so I could put it on display. So I could put it in a record frame and put it on the wall. And I went to Discogs. And boom, there was a copy. Ten bucks. It said the cover's in perfectly good shape. The record is unplayable. You're only going to want to buy this if you want it for the cover. And I went, boom! So here you go. Now, uh, Thin Lizzy. Thin Lizzy and Motorhead. Those are the records that I had there before. Anybody who's watched the old videos, you probably saw those records. And, of course, we have the Alice Cooper Love it to death. Autographed by everybody except Glenn, except Glenn Buxton. Um, but at some point, I actually want to do a record porn video uh, focusing on the records that I have have signed, the autographs on. And so I'll talk more about this one when I do that video. Uh, then we have Dolly Parton. Hello, Dolly. Or hello, I'm Dolly. Sorry. Hello, I'm Dolly. Now, hello, I'm Dolly is the very first Dolly Parton album from 1967, and it's really tough to get. It's really, really tough to get. I, honestly, this is the very first copy of this album I've ever actually seen out in the wild. And it was at a record store in Greenwich Village. It was $35, and, you know, look how worn it is. You know, ring wear. The record is in eh, pretty questionable condition. It's playable, but it's not very nice. 35 bucks, and I just thought, you know, buy it. You're never going to see another one. So, okay. Dolly. And, of course, you've probably seen this. This is a classic. This has always been on display back there. My signed copy of Sadak is back. And, uh, and the Shags. But again, we'll discuss signed records on another video. Uh, Sharon Jones. The great John Howard. The great John Howard. Obscure 70s singer-songwriter in the Elton John uh, Bowie circa, circa Hunky Dory meets Al Stewart uh, kind of vein. A great record. I highly recommend it. If you don't know this record, go check it out. And, uh, and it's follow-up. What do we have here? We have uh, Nina Simone. Nina Simone with Silk and Soul. And uh, yeah, just, just other stuff. I'm... What do you have here? Oh, Yoshiko Sai. Some really great 70s Japanese pop. Now this, Yoshiko Sai, this album is very... It's kind of like a Joni Mitchell album. It's like a Joni Mitchell sang in Japanese. Right. And uh, Springsteen. All right. Okay, here we go. My records are on display. Got some tasty ginger ale. And one more thing that I need. A blindfold. Yeah. Okay, alright. 
Yeah, that's right. I have flown the red eye on JetBlue. Okay, so now this thing isn't really that tight. I can see the floor, but I can't see here, so I can't see the records in front of me. So let's go for the first record, shall we? Okay, no, seriously. All right. Okay, what do I have? Oh, Kinks, In Concert, 1965. Uh, this is a Record Store Day record um, that, God, when did this come out? This has to have been, this has to be a good seven years old or something like that. You know, honestly, I don't really have a lot to say about this record because, oh, one thing that's really cool about it, check this out. And if, if, if you don't have this, they actually did a really nice flip back. I've got like a legit flip back, not a printed flip, flip back like they did on the Pink Floyd records. This is an actual flip back they did on this. Pretty cool. And uh, yeah. Yeah, this is like a, a proper, kind of a proper 1965 Live Kinks album. It's actually kind of a little better than the one that came out, the Live Kinks that came out in the 60s. And, uh, you know, I stood in line on, on I stood in line on, on Record Store Day and got this amongst other things. I don't remember what I got that day. But anyway, all right. So there we go. There's that. Not a very exciting first one, but we'll see what we get. Okay, so ready for the next one. By the way, I'm doing 10 of these. I'm gonna do 10. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Gotta feel the vibration to the records, man. What have we here? Oh! Hall and Oates. Hall and Oates with Bigger Than Both of Us in, uh, in Shrink. With the hype sticker and, and a Jimmy's Music World price sticker. Yeah, how do you like them apples? I got this, I kind of got this recently. I mean, I it's not the first copy of this I've ever had. Uh, I have... Yeah, I just I bought this because of the shrink. I ran into it at a record store in Brooklyn called Human Head. And they have a they have like a cheapo section, like a sort of a two dollar, five dollar section. And I found some Hall and Oates records in there that were in perfectly the records are in perfectly good condition. Cover and shrink, hype stickers and the lot. And, you know, in a sleeve. Oh, no, not the inner sleeve, it's the it's the it's the insert. Yeah, you know. Not a bad copy. Like, not a bad copy of this at all. I, I actually... Records are ridiculously expensive these days. Ridiculously expensive. So it really kind of makes no sense to me that a copy this nice of this album would be that cheap, but... I picked it up. But yeah, you know. Bigger than both of us. 1976. Right? has Rich Girl on it, of course, and this was kind of, well, this wasn't, I don't know, was this a breakthrough album? The Silver album was the breakthrough album, which is also an album I got that day. Yeah, the Silver album was a breakthrough album that had Sarah Smile, and then this had Rich Girl, and that was it. 1976 was like, as far as the 70s were concerned, 1976 was the year of Hollow Notes. And uh, I remember, I remember that year. I remember when, when Sarah Smile was new. I had a, I was in kindergarten and I had a friend who was like, have you ever heard that song, Sarah Smile? Oh my God, I love that song. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of Hall and Oates. And uh, it's a great album. And that's the thing about these Hall and Oates albums, especially albums, great 70s albums like this. It's not just about singles. There's a lot of great album tracks on this. I mean, what is, what's on here? Uh, get some glasses going on here. Back Together Again, Crazy Eyes, London Luck and Love. What else? Do what you want, be what you are. Of course, 
Switch Girl. Great record. All right. Get ready for the next one. I'm gonna go up here now. I'm gonna go over this side. What do we have here? Oh shit, okay. Strange Days by the Doors. Now, this Strange Days, uh, this particular copy of Strange Days is mono. This is a mono copy of Strange Days that I purchased kind of recently. It's the thing is, it's really pretty tough to get mono copies of Doors albums. I mean, is, has anybody ever actually seen a mono Waiting for the Sun? I certainly haven't. The first album isn't is a little scarce, but not impossible. I've very rarely seen this. But one thing that is for sure: apparently, people who bought mono Doors albums were I don't know, going to a lot of acid parties or something, I guess, or whatever. Whatever they were doing, they weren't taking care of their records. I almost never see a mono copy of a Doors album that isn't trashed. Stereo copies, they're always in perfectly good condition. The mono albums, the mono copies are always, look like somebody went surfing on them. I don't know, I don't know. So, recently I found this. I don't remember how much it was. It was like you know, it may have been like maybe 18 bucks or something, but it's in pretty decent condition. I, I have never seen a mono Doors album of any album, the first album, Strange Days, anything, that was in even playable condition. I mean, I have at least a couple copies of the first Doors album in mono, and they're in, they're in crap condition. They're in absolute crap condition. You know, and I bought them just because they were like five bucks or whatever, and it was just for the sake the novelty of having the Doors album in mono, but you know, I don't play it. I'm not gonna, I don't want to ruin my needle on it. This is not really in not bad condition. So, that is why I have that particular copy, but of course the Doors themselves, I go back to when I was 13, 14 years old, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's when I first got into the Doors, and I inherited some of my Uncle Rick's albums and he had Weird Seeds Inside the Gold Mine and that album is really where I started to dig into the doors and one of my favorite songs on that album was Strange Days and to this day that's one of my favorite tracks. Um, one of these days I'm going to do a ranking the door my favorite doors songs. I've done the albums but I haven't done the songs yet. One of these days I'll do a songs video and you'll see where Strange Days ranks. Hmm. And uh, oh yeah and I forgot to mention at the, at the, at the top of the video there. Now I've mentioned this in older videos, but people who haven't gone back and watched the early videos may have missed this, but these records here, this is like, this is my new arrivals bin, basically, because I just live in a, in a little Brooklyn apartment, and I can't fit all my records here, so most of my records, like the lion's share, like the meat and potatoes of my record collection, is actually at my mom's house. At my mom's house, because she has room, and, uh, and I don't. So, this... You know, I have hundreds of records here, right? But I have thousands at my mom's. So I really, I could do a really, I, there's a lot of really cool videos I could do, much better videos I could do if I had all my records here, but it's just not possible. It's not feasible. So, but but I have quite, this is like 10 years worth of, you know, build up. So, let's go to the next, let's go to the next record and see what we get. Let's go down here. I don't think I've gone down here yet. I'm trying to be all tricky and like trick myself. Okay, what do we have? Oh. Robert Plant, pictures at 11. Now, this I bought. When did I buy this? I bought this maybe couple years ago, because I only kind of recently became a fan of this record. I remember when it was new, and uh, anybody who listens to my audio podcast knows about Saul and Caesar. Saul and Caesar were uh, 
Well, my friends, when I was growing up, they were neighbors that I had that were a little older than I was. And they were like, they were, they were, they were really close friends of mine. And they were like older brother types. And they turned me on to a lot of music. They had a lot of records. And I used to hang out with them all the time. I mean, I was there day and night, especially in the summer. And this is one of the records that, one of the many, many records that they had in their bedroom. They had a bedroom in the garage, the family house. There were like five kids in this house and only uh, three bedrooms. So the boys, who were the two oldest kids, their father made basically turned the garage into their bedroom. And they had this really, really cool garage bedroom with black lights and, and you know, you know, incense and the whole deal. And they had a lot of records. This album was in there. And I used to look at this record all the time. I would, I would hear it sometime. But I really wasn't a big fan of Robert Plant solo stuff. Especially through the 80s and kind of into the 90s. It just wasn't, it just wasn't Led Zeppelin. And it was a little too 80s. And I just, yeah, it wasn't my thing. But in recent times, I've kind of gone back and listened to this stuff. And I like it now. I mean, this record in particular, kind of sounds like the proper follow-up to In Through the Outdoor. I mean, I really can kind of hear this. I didn't realize it when I was younger, but it doesn't sound like Led Zeppelin per se, but it kind of does because it sounds like the end of Led Zeppelin. It sounds like that album that was basically Robert Plant and John Paul Jones, In Through the Outdoor. When you hear Burning Down One Side, the opening track, I mean, that could easily be the opening track on the next Led Zeppelin album, don't you think? But there's so many songs in here that I like, I mean, that I that I did not like back in the day, but I mean, come on. Uh, Moonline and Samosa, Pledge Pin, uh, Fat Lip, yeah, so much, uh, yeah. Good record. Younger Me, I was wrong. This is a good record. Well, all right. <clears throat> on to the next one. By the way, the reason why I'm cutting in between each of these, uh, well, it's, it's the reason actually is very boring. It's technical. I'm, I shoot these videos on my phone, and then when I'm done with these videos, I have to, for reasons I'm not going to go into, I have to we transfer the videos onto my computer. And it's so much easier if the videos are shorter. If I did, if I had just one long half an hour or 45 minute video that I had to transfer over, you wouldn't see this video for a year. So I have to do each one of my polls as a separate clip just to make them make the videos you know a manageable size to transfer over so that's that not because I'm pulling any sleight of hand here and like you know I'm not cheating or anything but anyway okay so next one uh, I don't think I've done one over here yet so what do we got here what do we got here uh, Oh, okay. Well, here we go. Master of Reality, the great Master of Reality. Now this is one of those reissues they, they came out with. Oh, I don't know, what about 10, 15 years ago, right? And, you know, I've long, I'd long since have had an original pressing of this, but getting an original pressing with the poster Come on, forget about it. So I bought this simply because I want because they reissued, they reprinted the poster. It's slightly smaller than the original one, but this is basically why I bought that reissue. This is why I bought this, and it's pretty much the only way I'm ever going to have this poster. Because I mean, we are living in a time now where an original pressing of this album, you know, water damaged with split seams and unplayable vinyl would be like 30 bucks. So you add, you add a poster to it, game over. But obviously Black Sabbath, the, uh, the, the third album, that's the third album, and ooh, I was going to, I was going to give you a ranking, but I'm not giving you a ranking because I haven't done my Black Sabbath video yet, have I? But yeah, this is a classic. This is Stone Cold Classic. You, you don't need me to tell you that. You do not need to tell me to tell you that what a classic this is. I mean, come on, Sweet Leaf. Speaking of Saul and Caesar, 
this was an album that was in Saul and Caesar's place. Oh my God. That I remember, I was in their bedroom the first time I heard. <coughs> I mean, if that is not an iconic rock and roll moment, I don't know what. But Jesus Christ, Sweet Leaf, After Forever, uh, Children of the Grave, Lord of This World, Into the Void. I mean, yeah. And it's a nice heavy, I think, isn't it a 180 gram? It's a 180 gram. Ooh, yeah. So there you go. Okay. All right. Have I? I don't think I've gone down here yet. Have I? Let's see. Okay. What do we have here? Oh. Scorpions taken by force. Yeah, the scorpions taken by force. You get some glasses going on here. Yeah, this is a Japanese copy with the original proper cover, okay? Because, of course, and I think I have one here. Yeah. This is the one the Americans got. Super lame, super lame. This is the real cover. This is the real cover on this album. And, uh, you know, really rocking picture of the band back there. Yeah, what a great record this is. I mean, the, the, a lot of people, I think this, this, this early 70s Scorpion stuff is really underrated. I mean, come on, man. Steam Rock Fever will burn the sky. The sails of Sharon. Oh, man. He's a woman. She's a man. This, I think, may be... I think this may be my favorite 70s. Scorpions album, possibly. Now, I don't... I first got into the Scorpions uh, in, in the 80s. Uh, the first Scorpions album I ever owned was Blackout, Blakeout. When it, was the, when it was their latest album, I joined one of those, you know... You remember the old... Sorry, messing with my mic here. You remember those old record club... Thing, you know, and the TV guide in the back, you know, you can send away a penny whatever and give them your address and they send you a bunch of records free records and then you have to buy a bunch more records at regular cup club prices and then you never buy anything else and uh they keep sending you mail telling you you have to buy more records or else they're going to send the cops after you but nothing ever happens that i got i got blackout blakeout uh and van halen 2 and i forget what else a bunch of stuff and that was my first scorpions album ever now in the 80s i was not that keen on the 70s Scorpions records. They seemed a little thin sounding and a little kind of weak and polite sounding compared to the 80s stuff. But man, going back to it with, with adult ears and non 80s ears and non heavy metal ears, because I was into metal, I was kind of more into metal at that time. And I'm not really so much a metal guy now. I mean, there's a lot of the metal, hard rock and metal bands that I still love, but it's pretty much just the stuff that I loved then. And I've really, really, really warmed up to the 70s stuff. If you haven't checked out the 70s Scorpions records, I really recommend it. In Trance, um, of course, there's Virgin Killers. Uh, that's an original one. The original cover for that that they didn't do in the U.S., you don't want that one. But this, you want this one. Beautiful copy that I got maybe a couple years ago. Really cheap, in great condition. No Obi, but, you know, what are you going to do? Okay. All right, next up. Uh, okay. What do we have here? Oh, key. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know an awful lot about this record, but this key is a. I, I think this may be their only album. Now, I think there are two different keys. There's a band called The Key, or The Keys, and then this is just Key. And I'm, I'm a little hazy on what's what, but this is a 1978 album that's kind of like a... Well, I don't want to say it's a power pop album. I really hate that term. But it's a very... It's a kind of a... Let's see, there's the guys back there. It's kind of a, a ridiculously 60s-sounding record for 1978. I mean, they even look... 
1978. I mean, they look pretty, right? They, they, they look of their time, but the record is a really, like, great 60s uh, psych pop in a way. It's really melodic, you know, obviously very Beatles-influenced, and, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it just, if, you, if you're really into 60s psych pop and maybe even a little power popish kind of stuff, this is really, and you don't know this album, this is really worth checking out. I really, really recommend this. Uh, I, I found, I discovered, when did I discover this? I discovered this in the 2000s. Ah, oh, inner sleeve. What is this? Oh. The Emily label. This is a German copy. And, uh... Alright, alright. And, uh... Produced by L. Langefeld. I don't I, Ang, Langefeld. Langefeld. I don't know who that is. Yeah, this is a really good, good record that I highly recommend. Um, as I was saying, I, I discovered this album in the 2000s during the period when downloading was just rampant. When you, anytime you ever thought of a record that you, oh, I might kind of like to have a copy of that lying around just because, you know, for this track or this track, you know, some MP3s, you could just go look it up, boom, 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 boom rapid share, mega upload, boom, boom, boom. And there were websites that were dedicated to, they would post like an album a day or of just like these obscure records. Well, you know, some people would do obvious stuff like Dark Side of the Moon or whatever, but there were certain websites that had really, really obscure stuff. They would specialize in psych, 60 psych, or, you know, jazz records or whatever. And there was a website that called Red Telephone 66. It was a blog. They were doing it. It was a blog. It wasn't a website. And this is one of the records that they posted. I discovered so many great 60s soft psych and just psych pop records and psychedelic records on that website and this is you know they, they generally mostly would post 60s stuff but they would post a little bit of 70s stuff and this just kind of like even though it's 78 it's really it, it fits in with what they were posting this is a really good record give it a listen give it a listen okay all right What have we here? Oh. Jay Giles Band with Nightmares. Now, I'm not that knowledgeable about Jay Giles Band. I have a bunch of Jay Giles Band records that, you know, I bought kind of all in a short period of time because, well, I bought them back when they would all be inexpensive. These probably are still kind of inexpensive, even in current climate. But, you know, I bought this back when you could have got it for three bucks. And this is their 1974 album. Um, yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, what do you got here? You got the great Magic Dick. Uh, what, yeah, yeah, Seth. Is this Seth? No, no, no. That's Seth Justman, right? Uh, that's Jay Got. No, that's Jay Giles. Is that Jay Giles? That's Peter Wolf. Uh... And, oh, what's the name of the... Uh, Stephen Joe Blad. That's who that is. That's the drummer. Stephen Joe Blad. Yeah, anyway, so... One of the things that I really, that really uh, caught my attention when I first started noticing or started looking at 70s J. Giles Van records is that they had that Atlantic label that I associated with ACDC, Brian jo early Brian Johnson era, ACDC records because the minute when Brian Johnson came in and they did Back in Black they had this label but it was silver and the, the color of the label always coincides with you know the color scheme of the album cover right well I don't know how they well not really so much in this one whatever but yeah so with ACDC Back in Black they had a silver one and then they did a brown one for, for those about to rock and a white one for, for a flick of the switch and then when I started looking at these Jay Giles band albums, I'm like, oh, it has the ACDC Atlantic label. I didn't know. But little did I know, apparently ACDC has the Jay Giles band Atlantic label. 
Um, I don't. I'm not that familiar with this record. That's the thing. I bought a bunch of Jay Giles Band albums all in one shot, and you know, I find that when I do that, that I don't sit and get really, really acquainted. You know, really into it. Like back when I was a kid, and getting an album was like a big thing. Like I had to mow lawns to to earn money to buy a record. So once I had the seven ninety nine that I had to have to go buy a new record. That was a thing, like it was an investment. And so I went and I made sure I bought the record that I wanted, I chose wisely, and I brought it home and it was like an event. And I would dig and dig and dig and dig into these records and really get to know them. You know, now, you know, I'm an adult and I can buy records whenever I want. Oh, I, I'm interested in 70s J. Gallup band records. Boom, 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 let's buy all five or six of these at three bucks a pop. All in one shot. And then what happens is they just kind of sit there and I kind of poke through them, but I don't really, give each individual album the kind of time and attention that they really need. What I've heard of these records, I really like, but I just, I'm not that intimate with them yet. Bloodshot may be the most of all of them, but I do know that from what I've listened to, that this is one of the better ones, the one of the ones that I thought sounded the best. But maybe we'll know more about that later. Oh. Hair. Okay. What do I want? I'm gonna give this a little bit more. I'm gonna get a little bit more vibes, man. Well, you know what? There's some down here. Let's go down here. Let's go to the bottom. I'm gonna sink to the bottom with you. Okay. Okay. Oh shit, okay. Stylistics. The very first Stylistics album. Now, I love the Stylistics. This is definitely... I'm not going to ever do a Stylistics album ranking, so I can tell you right now, this is by far my favorite Stylistics album. Um, Stylistics is one of those bands, even though I have a bunch of their albums, I'm more of a singles guy with them. But this, this is such a great album. And it has so many... Well, first of all, I have two or three copies of this because it's one of those deals where I bought one... You know, I just was looking for it, and I found one for a couple bucks, and it wasn't in that great of conditions, but I bought it just to have it. And then I ended up really liking it, so then I found one that was a little nicer, and I bought that. And then I ended up finding this in shrink with this amazing, this amazing hype sticker. I mean, check this fucking out. I mean, what do you, you know, come on. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't not buy this. And it has... The Avco in a sleeve. Yeah. But I mean, this, this is such a great record. I mean, it has Stop Look and Listen to Your Heart, one of my very favorite stylistic songs. Bet you by golly, wow. You are everything. People make the world go around. If you haven't seen Crooklyn, the opening scene with People Make the World Go Around, just, ah, uh, yeah. If, if you're even remotely interested in checking out the stylistics beyond the singles, go for this album. And, and try to get one with that uh, little sticker there, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah, you know, speaking of the uh, stylistics, when I was a kid, and I used to hear those songs on the radio, and they were all current hits on the radio, probably like a lot of kids in the 70s, I thought it was a woman singing. And I don't know if I mentioned this. I think I feel like I mentioned this on a video. Maybe it was on my podcast. But when I was a kid and I would hear those songs and I thought it was a woman singing, I pictured it being a woman who looked like Velma from Scooby Doo. Like I, yeah, I was picturing like a white girl with that you know brown kind of bowl hairdo with the glasses. I mind of a kid. Okay, so this is the last. This is the last of the albums. This is album number 10. So this is going to be the last one I'm going to pull. So I better choose wisely. Ah, ah, but I...
All right, let's go over here. Oh, sh okay. The left bank. The left bank pre ballerina slash walk away Renee. Or the other way around. This is the very first, the very first left bank album. And now, they only had two albums. They have this one, and then what was the second one? Uh, I don't remember because I don't have that one. Do I have that one? I don't think I have that one. But I have a good two or three copies of this particular album, and it's another one of those deals where you find one that's nicer than the last one you bought. But then also, when it comes to 60s albums, you have Mono versus Stereo as a thing. Now, I bought this, I bought this recently. Uh, oh, that's one that has a nice black, plain black inner sleeve. Those are cool. But now, I bought this recently, kind of maybe about a year or two, maybe a couple years ago, because it was mono. Now, I have at least one stereo copy stashed away, probably, at my mom's, and um, I found this recently for maybe 15 bucks or something, which is pretty damn cheap for this record, and it's in pretty good condition. It was in mono, and I just thought, what a steal. I mean, there's a little split in the seam up here. But, I mean, the spine is good, it's pretty clean, no ring wear, it's, it's pretty nice. And I thought, man, what a score, right? Mono copy of the first Left Bank album, I mean... What we got here? I mean, Pretty Ballerina, She May Call You Up Tonight, Barterers and Their Wives... Ah, oh, I've got something on my mind. Evening Gown, Walk Away Renee, Shadows Breaking Over My Head... Singing that in the wrong key. In shadows breaking over my head. Something like that. Lazy Day. So many fucking great songs on this record. And I just was, I couldn't believe how much I scored. And I brought it home. And I put it on. And I'm going. It sounds like, it sounds like a stereo mix. And I went up and I'm kind of doing the balance back left and right. It's stereo. It's it's a it's a mono cover. The label. The label is mo says monoral on it. It's like it's a monoral mo monoral. It's a monoral label. But the actual vinyl is stereo. So I still don't have really a mono copy of the first left bank. I mean, if I ever find one where, where I actually have the mono record inside and maybe the cover's not so nice. I can mix and mash, and I have a nice cover for it. But yeah, so I have a stereo first left bank inside a mono album cover. Hmm. I mean, it's a misprint. It has the proper label on it. I don't know. So any, any anybody want to buy this? I'm just kidding. All right, so that's it for this random record pool video. Uh, my very first. I may do it as a series. Maybe I'll do more. I don't know. Let me know. Is this you know at all interesting or enjoyable to watch? Should I do more of these? I'll probably do more. You know, regardless of what you say. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you to everybody who's been subscribing. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you do subscribe, click the little bell because you're going to want notifications. And, uh, you know, like, comment, and, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, really, honestly, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm still having fun making these videos, so uh, we'll, we'll see how long we'll see how long we can make this last, huh? All right. Thank you again to everybody, and I'll see you next time.